We finally got to see the highly anticipated new roster of the Sentinels go up against the guard, but things did not go too well for the Sentinels. This video will cover some of the reasons why I think Sentinels ended up losing to the guard on Ascent, their second map of the series. Number 1. Agent Selection I'm not picking out agent selection as a problem because Sentinels chose a bad team comp, but what I am pointing out here is that every team has a different color, and they need to pick agents based on their player strengths rather than what appears to be meta or the strongest team comp on a given map. Now, this isn't to say that there aren't agents that are superior to others on a given map, or is it to say that Sentinels didn't know what was best for them, nor is it to say that this was a deciding factor in the outcome of the match, but I do think that a different selection of agents could have helped them out. First, I'm not sure if putting Shroud on Astra was the best choice. Make no mistake, Astra is a very strong agent on Ascent, as multiple teams have shown in recent memory. But considering Shroud is relatively new to the Valorant competitive scene, or at least he's kind of returning to it, and that he is, as much as I hate to say this as his fan, most likely Sentinel's weak link, it probably would have been better to put Shroud on Omen. Omen is a much easier agent to pull off than Astra, who isn't so bad on Ascent himself. A great example is Angel from FPX, who was quite often put on Omen duty, but it worked extremely well for him in FPX, because he didn't have the additional pressure from having to decide when to use all these different kinds of utilities. Secondly, Triple Initiator might have been an overkill. Considering how Sentinels haven't had much time to work together, at least compared to the other teams, it might have been better to use a Sage or a Killjoy to slow down opponents pushing towards the site instead of having to play for retakes or duel it out as a team. Sage would have been a great pick, as multiple players especially from the EU region have shown before. And Sentinels have a great Sage player in Dapper. Dapper also could have played Killjoy, and maybe Sentinels could have put Tens on Jet like Artist did in their Masters run. But the Sage pick is much simpler to utilize, and as we all know, Chamber is just too busted right now not to use. In short, if I was a Sentinels coach, I would have opted to use the Fnatic Ascent team comp with Dapper on Sage, Shroud on Omen, and Shazam on Fade. To be fair, Sentinels could have tried all these different team comps only to conclude that the Triple Initiator team comp was best for them. But from what I can see, their agent selections don't really seem ideal. Number 2. Tens making big mistakes. Before I highlight some of the mistakes that Tens made, I do want to point out that he wasn't the only one on his team making mistakes, nor is it fair to shoulder such a big responsibility to one player. But life is unfair, and with big paychecks, I mean roles, comes big responsibilities. Tens is a superstar on this team, and he's playing the agent meant to have a, a lot of impact on the game. So it was really important that he stepped up, or at the very least, not make some crucial mistakes. We'll take a look at two rounds in which Ten's decision to play aggressively backfired, and it ultimately cost Sentinels those rounds as well as substantial damage to their economy. This is round 6 of the map, and many people who watched the game probably remember the moment as it was really questionable decision on Ten's part to walk into the smoke with his operator. Tens probably didn't expect three players from the guard to walk in like that, but this really highlights what I think is Tens' biggest weakness in that he likes to go for what appears to be high risk, high reward plays that are actually extremely unnecessary. So this round was really crucial for Sentinels because they invested a ton of credits to buy both the Operator and the Odin. For the Sentinels, this round was worthy of two rounds as it would have been incredibly, incredibly difficult to win the next round on low buys. What's even more problematic about Ten's push towards smoke in mid here is that the Sentinels are 3 stacked towards A site, 
And as a result, they're relatively weak towards the B side. This meant that Ten's life was the most significant out of all 10 players on the map this round. And considering he was the backbone of Sentinel's defense this round, the play that Tens goes for isn't a high risk, high reward play. It's actually a high risk, low reward play. Because think about it. If Tens gets a pick made against a player against a guard, is it going to automatically win them the round? Not really. But if Tens gets killed at mid, it will almost automatically lose them the round. And the next one on top. So considering all of this, it really didn't make sense for Tens to do this. Next, we'll take a look into round 9. And for the love of God, I do not understand why pro players still try to abuse this chamber teleport setup on B main. While this chamber teleport spot has its advantages while when defending a B main push so that you can take early contact and then teleport back into holding a great angle from CT. This is just so vulnerable to a mid to B push without teammate, teammates backing you up that I really don't think Ten should have used this setup here. Clearly, Sentinels were going to 3 stack on A, and if this was a plan all along, Ten should have not have set up his teleport like this. In Ten's defense, this probably was closer to a team decision than his own. But the way Tens decided to teleport was also slightly questionable. Tens literally just saw Jet dash onto switch from market. And so he should have known that there was a good chance that there are additional enemies that are coming out from market. With that information, Tens had to wait until he was actually in danger from contact from B main or wait for his teammates to rotate so that like, someone can trade out for him. Instead, Tens gets a little hasty and gives Phelan a free kill. And with Shazam quickly following him, Sentinels automatically lose a round with KJ Ultimate in play. Finally, we have to give credit where credit is due. The guard made some big plays to win the game themselves, and at the end of the day, the guard simply just played better than the Sentinels, especially as Trent really popped off this series. We can make jokes about some of the Sentinels players making mistakes or throwing the game, but these are all great players that are compete, competing at the highest level. It's not going to be easy for any team to win consistently, and that's why we admire such teams. As a Sentinels fan though, I do hope that they can survive in this LCQ and wish them the best of luck. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please like, subscribe, comment, and or all that good stuff. And until next time, see you guys later.